Hello everyone and welcome back to Callie's Corner here on Unfiltered Gamer. I'm Callie and in today's video I'm going to be sharing some tips for board game publishers and designers on working with reviewers. This video is mostly based on our experience here at Unfiltered Gamer where we've just put up our thousandth video, 99% of our videos of which are board game reviews. So that is a lot of reviews that we've done. This video is intended for publishers and game designers so you can get an idea of the best practices when sending out your game for review so you can get a really timely and comprehensive review. But if you also just want to learn more about behind the scenes in the board game industry as well, you're welcome to watch. A really important question to ask first is, is your game ready to be reviewed? Remember, whatever you send out to reviewers is what they're going to share and what your backers are going to see. And nowadays, backers expect a fairly complete game to be shown on the campaign, and that also needs to be reflected in the reviews and other content from content creators that you have on there. Make sure what you send is what you want shown in the video content. Although many reviewers, us included, will add a little note that this is a prototype copy and things could be adjusted or change in the final version of the game. Our review is based on our experience of the game. So we're going to try to play the game to the best of our ability based on the rules given. However, if you do see reviewers reaching out a lot to you to ask for rule clarification, that may be a good indication that you need to re take a look again at your rule book and readjust some things before sending out for more reviews. On our side at Unfiltered Gamer, we will reach out if we see any like major game breaking issues with the game, try to work through it together, make sure we played it correctly, and check in to see if you still want to do a review at this time. Also before embarking on this process, it's important to select reviewers that are going to be right for your game and your audience. I recommend checking out some of the content around games that are in similar categories as your game. What reviewers are really excited about those types of games and reach out to them. All right, you're ready to send out your game. Let's talk about everything you need in that board game package to make this process really easy for both the reviewer and the publisher. The first tip I have here is to always, always print out your rules. Even if it's not final yet, it's not super stylized or done, printing out the rules just makes it so much easier for the reviewer to have everything they need in front of them to get started playing your game. And that's what you want them to do. You want them to play your game right away. My second tip is to always put your game materials in a box. This is just so helpful for reviewers. Even if you don't yet have a box, a branded box cover, just a plain box will be fine. You really want to help the reviewer keep those game materials all together in one place. And that said, having a branded box is going to look a lot better on video content especially. Finally, please include a return label if you want your game returned. Also make that clear in your communication with the reviewer that you do want that prototype returned either to you or you can even include a label for the next reviewer if you have limited prototype copies and you want them to get to multiple people. In fact, one of the best ways to make it just like super easy for your reviewers is to schedule courier service that'll pick it up from one place and ship it for you to the next place. This not only makes it super easy to reviewers who are overworked and usually doing this type of work as a, a side passion project and hobby, but also ensures that you're going to get the game you need to the next place on time. Next, how can you build a good relationship with a reviewer? Well, one of the easiest things is just to be polite, treat it like a, a business relationship where you're trying to help each other out. 
think about what's going to help the content creator as well as yourself. Creating content takes a long time. They've already spent time talking to you, the publisher or game designer. Then when they receive the game, they're going to have to learn the rules, play the game several times. Let's say if it's a hour and a half, two hour game, you want them to play at least like three times with different people scheduling that out. That's a lot of hours. How much would you get paid in those hours? And that doesn't even include creating the content. Here at Unfiltered Gamer, we could spend four to 10 hours on one video. My point is a lot of reviewers, content creators are doing this because they love the industry. They want to share great games with everyone else. Try to make this relationship mutually beneficial in whatever way that is. And the very basic bare minimum is providing a free copy of the final published game. Another way to build a good relationship is just to check in and ensure the reviewer has everything they need. I love media kits. Media kits that provide the a transparent PNG of your logo and game title, uh, the base information about the game, some photos that we could use. All of this is really great. However, if you, you have sent it early on in the relationship, it may have gotten lost in all the information. R just about a week or two before you want the video to go live is a great time to check in and resend that media, media kit. Speaking of due dates, how long should it take to get a review? Remember that the time your reviewer spends with the game doesn't start when you've agreed to have them review it. It starts when they get that physical copy of the game in their hands because before then they can't start to learn the rules or play the game. If you see photos of your game on social media or even on our live stream, that doesn't necessarily mean we're ready to share our full review and opinion about the game. We may want to play your game multiple times, which is a good thing, and play it with lots of different people or even just particular people in our game groups that we want to play with to get a more well-rounded opinion. And that's really good for your review. In general, I find reviewers will try to do their best on timing, but if you don't already have a specific agreement in place with your publisher and your reviewer on a specific date, please be patient. Another good question to ask is, do you want to pay for your review content? Here at Unfiltered Gamer, our review itself is always free. However, that free content, which as we explained before, does take a lot of time to do, even if it is free, means that we have a backlog of usually about three months. Our sponsorship services, including ads, live stream playthrough, and better quality and better edited video content are paid and so scheduled first. We'll package your review in with that content and ensure that we get it out on time. You'll have to check in with each reviewer to understand their pricing and guidelines for paid content and unpaid content accordingly. Finally, what should you expect after the review is published? Well, for the most part, reviews are not going to be previewed by the publisher because a review is someone's opinion and we don't want that colored by what the publisher thinks. Once the review is published, that's great content that you can use. Shout it from the top of the rooftops, share it out on your social media channels, to your email newsletter list, embed it on your campaign. Another great tip is to actually take a quote that the reviewer says during the video, pull that out, add it to a graphic. There's some different things you can do to share out that content and show your backers that you have some social proof behind your game. Congratulations on getting your game out there. I know it's tough to let your design go and leave it kind of open to different opinions and even criticisms, but those are just opinions and bad reviews does not necessarily mean that someone isn't going to back your game. They just want to hear what different people think and based on what those reviewers like or don't like, that may actually be a good choice for them. 
All right, I hope this video has given you some food for thought as far as how best maybe to work with reviewers. As always, this is just my opinion, one reviewer out of many. Definitely talk to your reviewers. Communication is, is so important and building those expectations from the start and try to have just a good relationship that's going to benefit both you and the reviewer because that's going to really help you in the long run when you want to have those reviewers on your side for future game and future content as well. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell. We really appreciate it. And we'd love to have you join the Unfiltered Gamer community. You can join us on our website, unfilteredgamer.com, where we share all of our review services and packages. You can choose the sponsorship package that is right for you, whether that's the free bronze one or the ultimate package with pretty much everything included that you could ever want, as well as ads on our website. That's something new that we're offering as well. That's really uh, exciting and I can't wait to see some of the great games that we're going to be able to share and build the community around. All right, this is Callie from Callie's Corner at Unfiltered Gamer. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always I look forward to seeing you next time.